Amita. And uh, we're continuing with this description here. This is Satagat 8. of these maidservants of Radharani. It's interesting that uh, Tungavidya Saki, who is Prabhupada Saraswati in Gauralila, that he's spending so much time in his book to describe the servants of the Lord. Generally we hear so many books to describe the Krishna, his form, very minutely his form and his bodily structure and his ornaments and clothing and Radharani's form and transcendental body and ornaments and clothing and her twelve ornaments and sixteen decorations and all these things very minutely described. But this uh, now, and that's important for us to meditate on and to become purified by thinking of that, or thinking of their forms. Rup Dhyan, it's called meditating, it's a form of meditation to meditate on their beautiful bodies and forms, their clothing and uh, complexion and everything. But equally purifying and even being directed here by Prabhupada and Saraswati is to meditate on the forms of the servants of the Lord. And um, in this book, Gaur Govinda Smarna Padati, Gaur we're going to Smarna Padati by Dhyan Chandra Goswami, which is a Padati, which means a manual. Padati means a manual or step-by-step um, book, you could say. It describes some rules of, let's say, bhajan, practices of bhajan that are generally followed by the bhajananandis in Gaudiya Vaishnavism. And it talks about Guru Dhyan, to meditate on the Guru. And when one takes Diksha, the Pancharatrika Diksha, he receives Brahm, uh, Guru Mantra, Guru Gayatri. And of course, Gaur Mantra, Gaur Gayatri, and Gopal Mantra, Kam Gayatri, like this. Radha Mantra, Radha Gayatri. Different mantras are given. And this Guru Mantra, Guru Gayatri, it's actually a meditation on the spiritual form of the Guru and his Seva in the Leela, Garanga, and also Radha and Krishna. So that's the meditation. As we meditate on Radha and Krishna, and we also meditate on where they live and the Leela Stalis, and we meditate on the Sakis, the forms of the Astra Sakis and the Mandris especially the primary mantras. We also meditate on the form of the Guru as a sadhaka, let's say, not as a sadhaka, let's say Guru Rup, his Guru Rup and Gaur Lila, and then his sort of in the Krishna Lila as a coward boy or a coward girl, a sakka or a sakhi. So that's important and that's purifying and that's part of the meditation. So he's telling here to meditate on the mandris and to, even he's saying, think of yourself like this. And it's quite detailed. So here he says in text 26, Snegna chata khanda dokan dali chudan chud angara shriyam charu shreni tata kriyadan maha veni latojulam veni latojulam the mandri's arms resemble banana trees. Whatever that, I guess it is. They must be. Sneena Chattakanda Dokan. Can't say what their idea is. We'll look at this other translation also. And they're decorated with armlets and bracelets. Generally, the arms are compared to, to lotus stems. If they're not thin, they're not fat, they're, they're very beautiful in shape. And chanting hair braids hang down her back and swing to and fro. Braids or braid, I don't know. Charu Shani Tata Kridan, Maha Veni Latojula. 
That's very effulgent and shining braid. So, not too many short haircuts up there in the spiritual world. The traditional ladies look. They have long braid, braids. It's described by Rani's braid. Her baini, her braid comes all the way down to her thighs. It's so long. And uh, Krishna becomes enchanted by that. The braid of Radharani is sometimes compared to a cobra. You know, it's like a black cobra. And it, and it, and it bites somebody named, it bites a peacock named Krishna. <laughs> because cobras and peacocks don't get along very well. Because you may know that peacocks like to eat snakes. And uh, they have some capacity to do that, some ability. So Krishna wears a peacock feather on his head. But Radharani has a cobra on her head. <laughs> on her veiny is so shiny and so beautiful and dark black. It looks like the back of a cobra. So when Krishna sees that veiny of Radharani when she walks by in Terakadamba on her way to Nandagram to cook and we're just passing through the village gate when sometimes Krishna, he's already left the uh, Terakadamba and, and then he's gone to the, on his way back to the palace of Nanda Maharaj and he gets to the village gate, some gate, and he just lingers there. And let's stay here for a little while. And so then as he's standing there, then the gopis pass through the gate. And because he maybe missed them, maybe they were late getting out from Yavada Varsana. And then Krishna waits, he knows he has his own telepathy and he can exactly know where Radharani is at any given time. It's Krishna global tracking. <laughs> he can <laughs> track Radharani wherever she is in Vajmamba. So then he said, wait a minute, Subha, let's, let's wait here by this gate. So then they do. Then the gopis come walking through, and then they walk through the gate, and Krishna is leaning there, and, they, they, and, they, and then Lita Saki says, don't look at him, just look straight, we just go do our cooking, don't even look, they careful, look ahead, they may do some mischief on us. And then Radharani says, we don't have any water pots, we're not carrying any yogurt or milk or water pots, so they, what can I do? Said, no, we don't know, they, they might throw stone or anything, they're, they're, they're unpredictable, these boys. So and and, and uh, Radharani said, never mind, we don't care about them. So then they walk through the gate, just slightly looking like this, see out the corner of their eyes. And Krishna's leaning there on the gate, town gate, as they walk through. Then when they walk through, then Krishna goes. <laughs> He's walk. Krishna is watching from the backside as the gopis, especially Radharani, goes through the gate. And he's just musing within himself quietly. And then he sees his baini, Radharani's baini, her hair braid, dancing and swaying. As the verses there says, it says, so, the braids hang down her back and swing to and fro. This is uh, Kanda Dokan. Kanda Dokan. Sniga Chata Kanda Dokan. I think Sariga means like so when Krishna sees, then, then he, he, starts, he starts to go like this. Just like if someone gets bitten by a cobra, then the venom, the snake poison, goes inside the bloodstream, and then they get too much feverish, and then they, get, they faint, and they usually die. So Krishna saw, he was like, <laughs> seeing Radharani's veini, he was describing Govinda Lilamrita. Then Subha took his arms and said, Krishna, come on, let's go, it's time for breakfast. <laughs> let's go back to the palace and, and take bath and prepare, get dressed and get ready for breakfast. Oh yeah, okay. So, <laughs> so the, the Mandris, they have, why do they have these long enchanting braids? Maha, Vini, Latotalam. They have fulton braids. Uh, because the Mandris act as the nearest and closest Udipan. That Udipan means an excitant or a stimulant to remind Krishna of Radharani. To, uh, the whole purpose of the mandris is to please Radharani and to please Krishna. 
they remind Radharani of Krishna and they remind Krishna of Radharani. And they do so many different services. So they're, even their very forms, their forms, their movements, their speech, everything is, is saturated with Radha's bhav. With Radha's bhav and Radha's mood and Radha's uh, actions. Even sometimes when Radharani is tired or she's fatigued, then the mandris will massage her. They'll rub her legs or squeeze her legs or like this. And Radharani's lying there and she feels as if Shamsundar himself is directly uh, squeezing or rubbing her legs. And, and she's, she's, how is this possible? He's not here. You know, he's, I, I, he's gone out to see some other sakis after the Rasa dance and I'm resting here in Punjab. But he came back so fast. How does he know my legs are tired from dancing in the Rasa dance? It's actually the mandris. Because the mandris, they, they've seen, they've been there in the Kunja, and sometimes Krishna is pressing Radharani's thighs or rubbing her calves or rubbing her legs when she's tired from dancing. And they watch very expertly, and they try to understand what is Krishna feeling in his heart, and how is Krishna's heart being expressed through his hands when he presses Radharani's legs. And what is Radharani feeling when Krishna touches her? They're meditating deeply. This is the, the subject of their meditation. <coughs> the heart, the subject of the mandri's meditation is the heart and mind and movements and feelings of Radha and Krishna. So now later, when the mandri is actually doing that, then Radha thinks, oh, this is Sham. Sham is touching me. And she kind of, and she was, but how is it possible? And she looked, oh, it's Rupa Mandri, it's Rati Mandri. Amazing. So this is a, one of the unique specialities of mandris, that there's so much like this. So here in this verse, in uh, this other text translation, it says the smooth and splendid plantain trees of her arms are decorated with bracelets and armlets. The splendid vine of her braided hair plays on the surface of her beautiful thighs. Shreni means thighs. Adyanta charusu krisha madhya desha manoharam diva kunchita kosheyen agopha parimanditam. The waist of Radha's maid servant is very attractive, thin, and gorgeous. Her fine frilled dress reaches down to her ankles. Frill means like this kind of. It's a dress. Here it says, Her very slender waist is enchantingly beautiful. Here it says, Silk Sari. Her splendid silk sari reaches down to her ankles. It's not really a sari. They don't really wear a sari. They wear, what do they call it? Lahengra? Lahengra? What's it called? Lahengra. The dress is called what? The hango. The hango. Mm -hmm. It's like a, put a, they tie it around their waist, something like you see in Barsana, those ladies dancing, petticoat and like that. Nichole nati sukshmena soguchana chalan shobina. Alakanta parivritam muhura mohana vikshitam. Her head and forehead are covered with fine silk clothes bedecked with embroidered flowers and leaves. Sham Sundar repeatedly stares at her. That's what this translation says. This mandri wears a very fine uh, choli, beautifully decorated with bunches of flowers. Her charming eyes are surrounded by curling locks of hair. So Mohana Bhikshita means her her eyes, her amazing eyes. So this m makes more sense. That uh, it says here it says she has embroidered flowers on her clothes, on her choli. But here it says that she's the, um, actually decorated bunches of flowers. Because we read that Krishna, he's he's always decorated with very all flowers and things, wild flowers, Vajjanti garland. You heard Vajjanti garland. A 
mala made of five different flowers. Because braj is, this is the opulence of braj, the flowers and the fragrances and the caves and the kunjas. It's a natural paradise. It's a paradise of nature. So nature offers so many beautiful things like flowers and fruits and lakes and streams and waterfalls and, and birds and birds singing and frolicking animals and all these beautiful sights and sounds and the sounds of the forest and the sights of the forest and the smells and fragrances of the forest and the feeling of the forest and the ambience of the forest, the peace of the forest, the joy one feels in the forest. This is Braj. This is the Braj Vibhuti. And Krishna loves Vrindavan and the gopis love Vrindavan. So when they go out into the forest and they, you know, we say Vanamali Sham, and he's Vanamali, he's, he's, he's loves to be decorated. It says he has leaves in his hair and leaves and flowers and all these natural things. And they, they take some little skinny vine tied around their wrists and there's leaves there. And they're really like, I remember in the 70s, when we were a young man back then, late 60s, 70s, and there was like this uh, flower child movement and hippies and like that. And people would go to the parks and they would pick wild flowers and put them in their hair and, and make little necklaces or things. Everyone dressed, put feathers, they would find some peacock feather and put it in their hair or put it in their hat. Feathers. So these are the opulences of the forest. When you walk along the forest, you go in the forest in Vrindavan and you find peacock feathers strewn here and there, different colored peacock feathers, the natural with the eyes in the end, they're just like brown feathers and many different colored feathers on the peacock's body. Sometimes you find a green feather from a parrot. But Krishna boys and ladies and girls, they love to find these. Oh, look at this. They, they, they have their top knot of hair. They stick a peacock, stick a parrot's feather in there and wrap some mogra flowers, make a garland, wrap mogra flowers around it, and a couple other feathers. And this is their, their decoration. It's, it's quite amazing. And it's spontaneous. Spontaneous and uh, pure and, and simple and attractive. And this is Krishna. He's spontaneous, pure, simple and attractive. Everything he does is like that. So this is being the nature of the whole to think that their cholis actually are, they have fresh flowers, they're decorated bunches of flowers. So they have this choli like ladies wear, and there's flowers here and there. Even you read in Radha Krishna <coughs> Ganodesh Deepika, Rupa Goswami says they actually take flowers and they make a choli out of flowers. There's a flower, they take malas, they, they, they make small malas and they, they weave them like crisscross like this, like a pattern like a screen of a window screen, it goes like this and like that and like that. And, like this. and then they, they put there and they fasten it back somehow. And, then, and so everything's covered, but it's all mogra flowers. And then they maybe put some roses in between or whatever. And Krishna even has, he's described that Krishna has flower shoes. Of course, Krishna doesn't wear any shoes in Vrindavan. It's not in Goswami, he says in Vaishnav Toshani. In Mathura and Dwarka, Krishna wears shoes. Of course, in Hastinapur and obviously in Kurukshetra, he is wearing some shoes or whatever, <coughs> special boots or whatever they wear over there. But in Vrindavan, it's Krishna's no shoes. He's just going without anything. But just for play, they would just the gopis they would make like a covering of his feet with flowers, like a shoe. <coughs> and maybe you've seen in Krishna Bhagavad or Sometimes they've done that. I don't know if you've ever seen it. But I've seen that Krishna, when he take darshan, they have his feet in the summertime, the feet are covered with, they make like a, you know, like this, the foot is there and it's covered with his mala, like crisscross like this. And someone must have read that and had the idea that this was a nice thing to do. And <clears throat> so it's described that Krishna has flower shoes. So I mean, that they just, oh Krishna, here I made some shoes for you. So then they put it on his feet and tie it around, he walks for five minutes and it breaks off and falls off and everyone laughs. So this is, <laughs> this is the play, it's like play. They're decorating at the same time. So here it says that, we read this verse, her forehead, um, I said that already, okay, 29. Suvrita madura smera sa lila panga vikshanam 
Anashtarya Kalodharam, Narabangi Mayakritim. This Manjari Pransaki of Radha is decorated with a soft, sweet, shy smile, and she casts playful, sidelong glances. Salila Panga Bhikshanam. She is expert in various glorious arts and dramatic bodily movements. The Manjri casts shy, sweet, smiling, playful, sidelong glances. That's quite a, quite a glance. It's shy. It's sweet, smiling, smiling eyes, and playful. All in one. And they're sidelong to the sides. She is expert in various transcendental arts. The curving features of her transcendental form are very beautiful. So there's a word like that in English when I describe the beauty of a woman's form. They say she's curvaceous. <coughs> it's a word like that. You heard this word curvaceous. So here they say the curving features of her transcendental form. Here it says she's expert in various glorious arts and dramatic bodily movements. It's amazing how the Sanskrit can be understood in different ways. Radha Krishna Mahapremod Anchi Romansha Sanchayam Sri Swari Shikshita Shesha Kala Koshla Shalinim Due to ecstatic love for Radha and Krishna, the hairs on, this, on the body of this mandri stand on end. She is an expert in all kinds of arts because she was personally trained by her beloved queen, Sri Radha. <coughs> the hairs of the mandri's body stand erect in her ecstasy of love for Radha and Krishna. She is expert in all the arts, having been personally taught by her mistress Radha. Sri Shwari Shiksha Sri Ishwari Sri Ishwari Shikshatesha Kala Koshala Shalina Shalinam. Well, that's quite, they're both agreeing with that. That the Kala Koshala, she's expert in all the Kala Shalinam. Shri Ishri Shikshatesha. Shri Ishri means Radharani is her Shiksha Guru. I think I have this idea of Diksha Guru, Shiksha Guru. So Radharani is Radha Krishna Mahaprema. Due to ecstatic love for Radha and Krishna, Anchi Romancha Shanchayam. Her hairs are standing in end. Radha Krishna Maha Prem. We usually think of Maha meaning Prasad. This is Maha Prem. We, we know about Radha Krishna. Radha Krishna Maha, fill in the blank, Prasad. Radha Krishna Maha Prem, that, that Prasad will lead us to that destination, slowly but slowly. Radha Krishna Maha Premo Mudanchi Romancha Sanchayam Sri Shwari Sri Ishwari Sri Shwari Shikshate Tashe Sha Kala Koshala Shani. This is amazing to think that Radharani will be my Shiksha Guru. It's a very staggering point. Because the we read in other books by the Goswamis that when well, they're, aspi they're actually praying like that, kada, kabe, kada, when will Radharani teach me how to play the veena? When will Radharani teach me how to sing Mala Raga or Dana Sri Raga, which are her favorite ragas, Malara, Malara, Rag, or Dana Sri Rag? And when will she teach me all the arts of pleasing Krishna? So these are the aspirations of the sadhaka in Raghmarg. And he's aspiring to serve Radharani in various ways according to the ideas of the Goswamis. And he's also hankering with great uh, longing, utsaha, I mean rather, lalasa, city lalasa. He's hankering, lalasa, for perfection. When will that day come when I'm free from all this greed, anger, lust, and envy? And when will I be free from this burden of this crazy mind and this lazy, crazy 
dualistic body which is sometimes healthy and sometimes sick, when will I attain my Siddhadeya, my pure spiritual form? All right, that's fine. You have a pure spiritual form and you're in Bhama Vrindavan, but now what? Now you have to be trained in all the proficiencies of serving Radha Krishna's pastimes. So you may not have learned how to play Veena when you were a sadhaka in the earth planet. You are too busy chanting five lakhs a day or three lakhs a day or however many lakhs a day you're chanting, trying to get liberated and purified and realize, get the base, you'll pass your entrance exams. The entrance exams is to attain prema. And if you attain prema, then we can enter Bhama Vrindavan following the footsteps of the Brijvasis, uh, Gopi Anugata, following the footsteps of the Gopis or the Sakas of Vrindavan, then at the level of Prem we'll realize our, sup, our spiritual form, Sup Siddhi, and then we enter the college. So that's, well, when you enter, when you finally get enough qualification to pass the entrance examination into the college, then what happens? You start studying. They start enrolling in various classes with different teachers that give you shiksha so you can develop proficiency in a particular, one particular area of speciality, specialization. What's your major, they say. In the spiritual world, in Bhama Vrindavan and Krishna's Leela, there's lots of specialization. We have to become expert in dressing and singing and playing instruments and assisting pastimes and so we have to be expert psychologists and analysts and experts in diplomacy and experts in uh, lying <laughs> and experts in covering covering up things and, and and spying and so many expertise you have to have you have to have multi-dimensional degrees up there that's why it says all the arts she's expert in various glorious arts and here it says that She's expert in all the arts, having been personally taught by Sri Radha. So that's not a small title. Sri Ishre Shiksha, Adesha, Ashesha, Ashesha Kala. Ashesha Kala means there's unlimited arts. Ashesha Kala, unlimited arts, and you can read about the arts in our our um, Gayatri Mahima book. There's a list of the famous 64 arts. And one of the arts that Radharani will teach you is how to read someone's mind. And then she'll also teach you how to discover what someone's hiding in their hand, behind their back. Okay, What's it, what, do I, what do I have in my hand? What am I holding in my hand behind my back? And there's an art to figure that out. Oh, it's, you're holding a pen. See? So that's one art. Many more. The art of dyeing clothes, the art of uh, uh, discovering secrets, many unbelievable arts are there, 64 arts. So Radharani will teach all these arts. That concept, irregardless, I mean, putting aside the various individual arts that one may learn, just the idea or the concept that Sri Ishwari, the Supreme Goddess, the Supreme Queen, the, the Sarva Shakti Mayi Radha, Bhagavati Radha, she will become our Shiksha Guru. It's uh, that alone can certainly create a, lots of inspiration in one's heart to uh, leave this material world. We get very serious about sadhana bhajan. Someday I'll, I'll meet Radha and Krishna. And it's one thing to meet someone, hello sir, yes, nice to meet you, okay, bye. But to live with them day by day and be personally taught by them. And when you're learning something, you don't learn it right away, instantaneously. They may goof, they make a mistake, and Radha Rani will have to chastise you, you stupid. <laughs> and correct you and show you the lesson again. You can imagine how much compassion Radharani has as a teacher, how much patience she has as a teacher. Compassion and patience and love and care and concern that you learn the arts very expertly. Because why? Because all the arts that Radharani is going to teach you, or will teach you, she's teaching you for the purpose of pleasing Krishna. That's the objective of her school of arts, Radharani's Art School, Radharani's Art Academy, Academy of Arts, Radharani's Academy of Arts. It's called Ra, 
Radha's Academy Awards. Ra. So, this is a nice point to close on until next time. Uh, whatever next is. What's Sunday. What's the next? Um, Tuesday. Sunday. Sunday. Shri Vrindavan Mahimamrita Ki Jai 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 Shri Ram.